So proud of our youth group. That was a playback from 2018. I'm sure you recognize the voices being a sister Peyton Pullum and the youth choir. God bless you today. Hope you enjoyed the message today. It's all about love. God bless you. friends that are tuning in today on YouTube. We sure bless you today that you will come and celebrate with us on this second Sunday in the month of November 2020. We come today celebrating today is Youth Day at the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. So I ask the Lord to always give me something that I can speak to the youth. And I believe he also has done it again on this Sunday. Also, we welcome the adults to come and celebrate with us also. And you don't, you adults have to encourage the children to come and listen to their pastor every second Sunday at least. So today we're going to speak to you from Matthew, the fifth chapter and the 44th verse and Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, the fifth through the seventh verse. So we ask to bless you today, bless your hearts today as we come and learn to celebrate once again our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So let's listen to the scriptures today. And you youth, get your phones out or your Bible so you can also read along because you see right there in the promo that we're going to study in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter and the 44th verse and Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, the fifth through the seventh verse. You heard the beautiful voice of Sister Peyton Pullum as she led us in today uh, with the youth choir. Listen to the word of God. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Matthew, the fifth chapter and the 44th verse. Love the Lord your God with all your hearts, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk to them about them when you sit at the home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, the fifth through the seventh verse. May the Lord continue to bless you as you go about doing the will and the way of the Lord. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done to continue to do in our life and our living. We Thank you, Lord. We thank you for all that we've been through this past week, through the, the voting, the different levels of government, for our local government, and also on the federal level, level, all the way to the executive body, Lord. We just thank you so very much for that. And then, Lord, we come and just ask you to press upon our hearts that we would love those who despitefully use us, talk bad about us, but we, people will live just simply to love one another. It all can be done through you and in you through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Bless our youth today. Protect them through this pandemic along with our adults, Lord. Let us continue to encourage one another because all things happen in order according to your will and your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we ask it all. Amen. So today, this gospel message is also for our veterans today that we can come and celebrate them because Veterans Day will be this Wednesday on the 11th of November. So we salute the veterans today. So the gospel message today for the veterans and focusing on the youth, the tag on the text today is children love your enemies. Did you hear me? Children love your enemies. 102 years ago, the war ended with World War I. At exactly 11 a.m. on the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. After the war, Congress declared on November 11th an annual holiday. Originally it was called Armistice Day, and in Canada it is called Remembrance Day. But in 1953, after the Second World War, it was renamed Veterans Day. On the 11th day of the 11th month, we pay tribute to all the American veterans who have fought and who have died so bravely to provide for us the ability to have freedom in the United States of America. Also on the 11th day of November, ironically, is one of the birthdays of one of our youth, Brother Roman Felder. Isn't that something? So happy birthday. On Wednesday coming up, for Brother Felder. That's uh, uh, Nikki Felder, uh, a son, and the Reverend Felder, and Sister Bridget Felder. That's their grandchild. Isn't that great? So they, why veterans are deserving of this, this honor is because they fought and they died and they stood bravely at their post of duty. They learned later on even how to love their enemies. Christians should be just committed to the cause of Christ. Our focus should be that we should love everyone, just like our veterans have stood at their post of duty. Every Christian must stand at their post of duty in love. So, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost has committed us and striving to work through us that we'll never forget the sacrifice that Jesus Christ himself made because he died even for his enemies. Remember I told you last week, that that Roman soldier had to say after Jesus Christ had hung his head and died on Calvary's cross, he said, surely this man is the Son of God. Because Christ died not only for those who believed in him, he also died for those who would kill him. He died for his enemy. God is committed uh, through a covenant agreement to separate our thoughts away from those thoughts of Satan. Because Satan would never allow us to love our enemies. Remember in Genesis, the third chapter and the 15th verse, where it's first mentioned that we can see the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, I will put a separation between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And for you, you, what are you saying? God is promising that he's going to separate us from Satan, separate our thoughts from Satan and through the child who would be Jesus Christ he would teach us how to love our enemies I hope you got that the promise of the Savior the Son is God who suffered and won the battle on Calvary's cross for us then the Son would ask for the Holy Spirit to be sent so he continued to to encourage us as believers in God that we will learn how to love one another the Bible says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, a leader, a comforter to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it is neither see him or nor they know him, but you know him and he lives with you and will be with you. John, the 14th chapter, the 16th and the 17th verse. So youth, I want you to know, you can make a difference. Oh yeah, on the playground, at school, at church, in your own home. When you've done someone has done wrong against you, and you're a little angry with them, 
You can love those who even mistreat you. You can be those soldiers that are part of the great army of God, teaching one another how to love one another. We're going through some trying times, and you the adults have to learn to teach your children how to love those, even the ones that stand against you. Children, love your enemies. Youth, love your enemy. You see, we are the veterans of a great army, and we live daily by faith because the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. You hear that? The just shall live by faith. It was so important that it's written in Habakkuk 2 and 4. Again in Galatians 3, 11, Romans 1, 17, and Hebrews 10 and 8, that the just, that's us, should live by the faith of God, that it doesn't make any difference what is happening in our lives. Those that, were, that, that hate us, those that are, talk against us, that means believers. Someone may not like you just because of one reason or not. You still have to extend those persons the hand of love. Veterans are committed for the cause of freedom. Veterans are committed to the cause of courage. Veterans are committed for the love of country. So those veterans today, we salute you today. Now we're blessed in Galilee to have some veterans. Uh, Brother Charles Newsom, a sister Tanya Davis, Brother Tommy Thomas, Reverend Henry Felder, Reverend Logan, and Brother Chase Scott. Well, hope I didn't miss anyone. Those are veterans in our congregation. And we salute all the veterans today of every denomination, every creed, every color that represented the country in the most brave and way so, so we can know that God has brought you this far by your faith. Long after the veterans have, have laid aside their uniforms, have put down their weapons, they remain the most patriotic and the most loving and loyal people that we have in the United States of America. They are committed Americans in this country, and we salute you. Once a Christian has laid, put on the full armor of God, that's our armor. And we know that God will never leave us or he'll never forsaken us. That he's continued to protect us. We must re re remain faithful veterans of the army of God. Children, love your enemies. One day when you see the Lord, we will be blessed. When we're standing there before him in our long white robes, for all of you who were baptized in Christ, you are now clothed with Christ. And we have to learn to love everyone, even our enemies. Galatians 3, 27. Veterans are deserving of the honor that we're giving them today. Because we have to learn how to forgive our enemies. Remember those veterans that are in the Vietnam War? Vietnam War? They went back to Vietnam and met those soldiers they had fought against and they became friends and they learned to love their enemies. I mean, that's not only just one way for the American soldiers, also for the North Vietnam. They also learned and gave forgiveness and love to those American soldiers. Isn't that great? Even at a time when they were trying to kill one another, God has placed upon their heart that they learn how to forgive one another. Just as Christ has forgiven all, we will, he will reign forever, and we will reign with him in love. A man by the name of Stephen Covey says, I am not a product of my circumstances. I am a product of my decisions. So youth, you have a decision to make. You're not a product of what's happening around you and to you. No, no. You are a product of the decisions that you make now. So the veterans gave up their safety and they went off to a foreign land and they fought a war and now they're back home. And they're, they're not product of the circumstances of that war. They're only product of the decisions that they make today. And we as Christians, we have made the decision that we're going to love our enemies. And because of this great cost that the veterans have made, so that we live in a free land where we have the right to vote, we have the right to, to stand upon the, upon the statues and upon the ordinance of this country. And then with that, we're learning how to love one another. I remember Peter, when he was in the book of Acts, he was, 
he honored a military man, a, a soldier, and he honored that man because that soldier showed faith. Peter came to the home of that soldier, and because of that soldier's faith, Peter was, had his friends had the ability to invite that person in to the household of God. That soldier's name was Cornelius. He was a Greek who had accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior in Acts, the 10th chapter, the 17th through the 23rd verse. You ought to go look that up. And also in that, in a parable, we see in Luke, the 10th chapter, the 25th through the 37th verse, it's known as the Good Samaritan. We say then when the Samaritan came and he saw this Jew that had been beaten and put on the ground, when the Levite had walked by, the priest had walked by, the Levite, the priest who are supposed to be religious people. But when this Samaritan came, and Samaritan didn't get along with the Jews, but when he saw this man on the road, he picked that man up, put him up on his burden, and rode him into town, put him into a hotel room, and told the man, I'll pay for all the bills. That Samaritan had learned how to love his enemies. It is interesting to know that people who are simply religious don't always do the right thing. People that are simply religious don't learn how to love their enemies. That's very messy. That makes our lives as evangelicals, Christians, very messy. When people see us hating one another, they wonder what kind of Christians are they? How many of us delight today in our lives? Know that it's not easy to love your enemies, but it's something that we must do through sacrificial, sacrificial love. God's Spirit is pulling, up, pulling us and inviting us to become more of that person like Jesus Christ. The Spirit is guiding us and instructing us to be better. So youth, raise your hands. Come on now, I don't see those hands up. Raise your hands and say that I'm going to love my enemies. I'm going to love those who even hate me so that they can learn how to love me. Get your hands up. You're part of the great army of God. Thank you. Just as I speak a word today, just as I speak a word to the youth and to the adults today, just as I speak a word today, the word from Jesus Christ, our Lord, brothers and sisters, there is a picture of faith that we must paint and that is the paintbrush that we use is the paintbrush of love for that we can love our enemies. Not simply with words, but definitely with deeds. Jesus says, and I will ask and I will seek. You will find my love in your hearts. You open up the door and I'll come in and I'll be with you and I'll teach you how to love. So he tells you to ask, seek, and knock in prayer and I'll always be with you right to the end. All you have to do is just have the faith of a mustard seed and you can tell mountains to get up and get out of your way and surely they will. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. And for many of us today, we don't have to worry about it because God is on our side. So as I come to a close today, youth, children, adults, male, female, boys and girls, love your enemies because your enemy today can be your friend tomorrow. It is the veterans, not the preacher, that gave us the freedom of religion. It's the veterans, not the reporter, that gave us the freedom of the press. It's the veterans, not the poet, who gave us the freedom of speech. It is the veterans, not the lawyer, who gave us the right for a fair trial. It's the veteran, not the politician, who gave us the right to vote. It's the veteran that we salute, and we salute the flag today, the United States flag and the Christian flag that we serve under those flag, 
those flags of freedom and, and we proudly stand as Christian soldiers today. Today we are the veterans, but we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Today we are the veterans, but we worship him who died and is alive today. Our great commander in chief. No, not the president. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Yahweh. I'm talking about Yahshua. He is the one through the power of the Holy Ghost. They are the power and the commander of chiefs of our lives. So lest we forget the goodness of God. Deuteronomy 8, 11 through 20 says, Take care lest you forget the Lord God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today. Youth, I'm depending on you. The young people have got to move on up and teach all of us how to love one another. Show your love today. Because one day Jesus is coming back and he's going to ask you, did you love your enemies? But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. Matthew 5, 44. Love thy Lord God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And later on he was saying, love your neighbors as you love yourself. That's the truth today. May God keep you and God hold you is my prayer. Pray for those that are on our Wednesday night Zoom meeting through our prayer list. We pray still for Sister for Sister Sarah Lockhart and for Dr. Rose Chu, those we know for sure, the going on celebration of Ruth Mohair on Saturday. We thank God for them and all the, the ones who are in bereavement that we know and those we do not know. We ask you to pray for your strength today. We ask you, Father God, I hope that those that have been on our sick list and had operations, hope you continue to mend. Uh, we talked to Sister Lois a newsome. We thank God that she is mending and still going through physical therapy for, for the physical therapy on her knee and continue to pray there for Sister Dorothy Wilson as she continue to make that transgression transgression rather from from one to being working to retirement that we, that she's feeling better and we thank God for her sister Margaret Lambert and, and many others that we can name that they're on our prayer list that you continue to to stand up under the healing powers of God. To our seniors there at the church, Sister Ruby Jackson and Sister Dorothy Newbine, oh, thank you so much that you've been soldiers who have stood fast and God has helped you and held on to you. I talked to my cousin the other day, Brother Leonard Logan, that had an accident, and but he's doing real good and getting his car all fixed up and everything. And he just said, I'm not going to complain about anything. Some stiffening of his joints and his hand. But Brother Leonard Logan, stand fast, brother. You've been faithful and God is going to continue to, continue to bless you and to hold you. So we ask you to stand fast for all our seniors that are in the group. They're really doing good, and we're going to have a time on November the 22nd at the 11 a.m. service. We're going to come there in Galilee, and we're going to meet on the 22nd of this month and come and celebrate the end of our fast and also the bringing our socks, and God bless you for doing that, and God may continue to bless you and to keep you is our prayer. I hope that maybe we can come, Sister Harris, go by. Somebody go by there and pick up Sister Harris. Amen. So she can come on out and be with us there. We, Sister Harris, get your, get your daughter, Tamara, to come out there and pick you up. Like for you to be there if you can. So God bless you. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Have a good day today and keep praising the Lord. If the Lord delay is coming, see you next week. Bye-bye now.